I now have the real honour of introducing to the Lowager stage the chairperson of Lowager Institute Board, Miss Pat Anderson. Please welcome Pat. Good morning. Thank you, Richard. I think that must be a unique welcome to country uh, for him to stay. He hasn't done it before, and he told me he was going to do it, and I thought, I hope he gets it right, and he did. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thanks very much uh, to Richard. And on behalf of us all, I'd like to pay our respects uh, to Richard and the Larrakia people, and of course, their ancestors and elders past, present, um, and emerging. Like Ben, Darwin is also my home. I'm not Larrakia, I'm Eliara. It's a long way, a long way from here, but my family, have li we've lived here all, most of our lives. I'd also like to acknowledge all First Nations peoples who are here today, and thank you, June. That was just such a great speech. Um, uh, I'm very touched um, by you. We can all remember when June was first appointed as our first female Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander social justice commissioner. We were all just full with elation and joy and it was just wonderful. That's over a 25 year period. There was just one, one woman. This morning, I have three jobs to do. First of all, to welcome you to the Lower Institute International Indigenous Health and Wellbeing Conference 2019. Second, to tell you a bit about the past 22 years as we celebrate the conclusion of the Cooperative Research Centre part of our history. And three, to, de to deliver a very important message from a person whose spirit and values are the flame that keeps us going. So, welcome to all delegates. And I think it was Ben that said earlier, you all look really beautiful this morning, all sitting there. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to our generous sponsors and to all the individuals who worked tirelessly, small army in fact, to make this event happen. I acknowledge especially the Australian Government Department of Health, our conference partners. Let me tell you a little bit about who's in the room. There are 760 plus of us in this auditorium. This is indeed an indigenous space. You come from First Nations from Bhutan, Canada, Denmark, Hawaii, India, Indonesia, Nepal, Aotearoa, Philippines, Thailand, USA, and all of us from across our vast continent. Our inspiration is that this conference will be a place where respectful, provocative conversations can take, can take place about all the, cons all the concerns that we worry about today. First, peoples from across the globe and what our visions and ambitions are for the future. I like that analogy of not just moving mountains, mountains but going beyond it. And that's certainly, I think, what we have all been doing for generations. We'd like these conversations to explore new ways of thinking, speaking and being in the world, serve who we are, promote new ideas and take a planetary approach. As an Indigenous space, we want the conference to be an environment where we come together to support each other, where we welcome our non-Indigenous colleagues and where discussions can be had in safety. We want us to take this opportunity for deep thought to learn from each other and to plan for future action. We invite delegates and, and presenters to consider the global implications of their work, to highlight the role of First Nations peoples in leading change, and to showcase Indigenous pollution, uh, solutions. I take this opportunity to, to remind you that 2019 is the United Nations International Year of Indigenous Languages to which this conference is an approved event. In addition to the many challenges that we as First Nations peoples face, con face constantly, today we have the added challenges for us in particular, as events globally and nationally swirl around us, moving swiftly to the right. With that in mind, we'll be working on a conference statement to send out to the world the statement will help us all, collectively, individually, and as organisations and communities, to advocate for, advocate for change. 
with the statement, we want to achieve a, a united voice from this floor. So please have conversations among yourselves and, and let us know. If you can, write down your recommendations and either hand them or text them or send them to our conference statement team. And here, um, here are the, here's the contact details and you can approach the, the sessions of your chairs for your recommendations. So at the end of the day, would all the chairs please report to the conference team and there they are there, that's who I was looking for. Um, so that's Leonie and her team there with Janine, they're going to be the main, uh, the main writers. So if the chairs can see them at the end of the day and help them prepare the notes or just give them the main themes and the ideas that can be inserted in the, in the statement. And then we'll come back to you at the beginning of each day and say this is what we heard and we'll, we'll take it from there. So you all have in your conference bag a copy of the 2016 conference statement, which was distributed to some 10,000 individuals and organisations around Australia and the world. The statement gave voice to our common ambitions at the time and made a call to action. I also want to report that Professor Karina Walters, a 2016 keynote speaker from the Choctaw Nation, took our message of support to the Standing Rock Sioux in their opposition to the Dakota Access Pipeline in the United States. Our voices as First Nations peoples must be heard. Here in Australia, we have gifted the nation with what has become known as the Uluru Statement from the Heart, which calls for voice, treaty, truth. As many of you may know, there is no settlement between us as First Nations peoples and all of those people who came after us. There has been no acknowledgement of us as the First Peoples of this land. This is our place. Racism, invisibility and consequences of colonialism plague us still and remain major obstacles to our health and well-being. As we say in, the, in part in the Uluru Statement, this is the torment, the torment of our powerlessness. So, let's put our minds together as a conference as we develop the conference statement over the next three days. Now, my second job. By holding this conference in Darwin, the Lowerture Institute honours its origins, which date back to 1997, when the Cooperative Research Centre, or the CRC as we called it, for Aboriginal and Tropical Health was established. As many of you will know, the current CRC finishes on 30 June, but the Lowerture Institute itself continues from 1 July. The last 22 years have been quite eventful, to put it mildly. In 1997, Dan Ladilba Health Service here in Darwin and Central Australian Aboriginal Congress in Alice Springs and the Menzies School of Health Research and others submitted an application to the government for funding a for funding after a long gestation period, we were successful. Why did we do this? Why did Dan Ladilba and Congress do this? Our vision was then and always has been as First Nations peoples to stop being the subject of research, but rather to set the research agenda and control it. That research, that research would be by us, for us. This decision was, was a risk at the time for Dan Ladilba and Congress, but we did it anyhow, and here we are today. Look at the room. For example, all projects funded by the Lowerture Institute have Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander researchers in the team, and 68% of the chief investigators are senior Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander researchers. When we started 22 years ago, there were two researchers in the country that were known. It was Marcia Langton and Ian Anderson, just two. So what has been achieved over the past 22 years? I think it's this. We have demonstrated what can be achieved when Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures, knowledges, priorities and leadership are at the centre of the work to improve the health and well-being of our peoples. You know, I'm using health in its widest, the word health, in its absolute widest application. Each of the CRCs has built on the legacy of the preceding organisation, 
gathering support, partners, and a network of researchers committed to its mission, values, and methodologies. That effective health research requires a, a process that reflects community priorities. This approach was in stark contrast to the way things have been done in the past, when there was a deep resentment against researchers by us. The early conversations about finding a new and more effective way to doing research occurred in the early 1990s, a time of growing advocacy and independence for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander organisations that saw health research, culturally appropriate research, as a rights issue. And of course, there were key individuals, too numerous to mention, who were pivotal in pushing for those changes. It was not an easy task, in the early days to bring university-based researchers and representatives from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health organisations together, myself included, I have to admit. And it took time and inspiration to break through the barriers. That was such a hard job. From the beginning, the CRCs and the Lower Institute have brought together people into a community of interest that transcends individual disciplines and silos. The great strength of this approach has been its focus on bringing together researchers and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, developing research capacity, improving ethical guidelines, transferring research outputs and in new methodologies. These are now embodied in the key research principles of the Lowitcher Institute, which are beneficence, to act for the benefit of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the conduct of research. Leadership by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Engagement of research and users. Development of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander research workforce. Measurement of impact in improving the health of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. By supporting a new generation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander researchers, we have contributed to the growth of a cohort with high levels of expertise that will deliver positive health outcomes, and they're already doing this. We have awarded to date 62 doctorate and PhD scholarships, 33 master's scholarships, and 15 scholarships for other tertiary courses. We have supported community workers develop research skills, we have supported high school students become interested in health research careers. We are also committed to recognising excellence in the research workforce with awards that recognise our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander researchers and leaders, as well as a lifetime award. We will be announcing the 2019 winners of excellence awards at tomorrow's dinner and at the awards ceremony at the end of the conference. Guided by these principles and, and with the support of our many partners, we have contributed to a significant body of knowledge and have earned a place of cultural authority in the health research sector. I am very grateful for the enormous support, commitment and goodwill by many individuals and organisations in, in research, communities, government, our CRC partners who have played an integral role in the delivery of our work and many others. Again, many of you are here in the room today. I acknowledge the investment, of course, of the Australian government in our capacity to deliver this important work. I thank especially the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, their organisations and individuals who have shared so generously their expertise, their wisdom and their guidance. Increasingly, we're reaching out to our global Indigenous family through projects such as the Lancet Lowitcher Institute Global Collaboration on Indigenous Health, published in 2016. And we made the decision to hold an international conference like this every two years. We hope that every conference, more and more of our brothers and sisters around the world will be able to join us. We are committed to doing this. As we go forward from 1 July, we will continue to demonstrate the, cent the centrality of culture in health and well-being. We will produce knowledge that is ethical and intellectually rigorous. We will grow strong national and international networks, provide cultural authority for non-Indigenous researchers, nurture the next generation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health researchers and take leadership 
and take a leadership role in the decisions that affect the health and well-being of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, our communities, our families and as individuals. I hope that you will continue to be part of our story. We also hope and will continue to work hard to live up to the vision for us and expectations of us of our patron, Dr. Lowacha O'Donoghue, who was also the first CRC chairperson all those years ago. In early 2010, when Lowacha launched the institute that bears her name, she wanted the organisation to reflect her values, her priorities, and to demonstrate a deep commitment to social equity for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. And that brings me to my third job this morning, to read out to you Lowacha's message um, to this conference. Unfortunately, um, she's not able to travel from Adelaide, but her presence is everywhere, and we welcome her niece, Deb Edwards, who's with us today. Lowacha's role ensuring the survival and robustness of the early organisation cannot be overestimated. She brought great gravitas and, and stamina and authority. And we take very seriously her vision and wishes for our organisation and the responsibility that that entails. I'm going to um, read her message now. This is Lowacha. Hello, everyone. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where the conference is being held. When I agreed to have the Lowacha Institute named after me, I entrusted in the Institute my spirit and energy, my values and priorities. I told them that I wanted them to be a courageous organisation, committed to social justice and equity for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, to match words to action, to achieve real, tangible and immediate outcomes. And today, I entrust you at this Lowacher Institute International Indigenous Health and Wellbeing Conference 2019 to put your thinking, speaking and being to work, to achieve tangible incomes for our peoples. We want to hear all the ways that we, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and First Nations of the world, come up with solutions and build our futures. For the next three days, I want you to have a conversation with the future, with your grandchildren and their children. Tell them, show them how you're going to build a better world for them with courage, determination and confidence. I will be with you all the way. With those words in mind, I remind all delegates that as First Nations peoples, we are the guardians and stewards of the solutions for many of the complex issues and mega trends that affect us and just rain down on us every day. Above all, in everything we do these next three days, we honour our ancestors, accept our responsibility to them and the next generations, while being true to ourselves in the present and investing in our future. We celebrate our knowledges, our resilience, our families and communities, our friendships and networks, our thriving and roll up our sleeves to build a future for our grandchildren and their children. Thank you 